title of the message is No More Toiling. Now, the word toiling may be a word that we're not that familiar with, but it's in the Bible a lot, and so we're going to look at some scriptures mm -hmm. on it. But basically, uh, it's about being overworked and uh, receiving uh, a few rewards. And so are you overworked and exhausted? And those mm -hmm. are the issues that we're going to be looking at, and we all need to address that because Jesus can show us a better way. Hallelujah. And uh, Hallelujah. what we have to do is to yield to him and ask him what he wants us to do, and he'll show us uh, a good way, the, the best way. You know, uh, it's good to have perfect knowledge about the future. A lot of people don't have perfect knowledge, but there is uh, the Holy Spirit has perfect knowledge about the future. And I want to give you a, an example of a uh, a lawyer that I heard speak, and uh, she was in Los Angeles, and, and she said uh, she lived such a stressful life that uh, she had to get in the car and just drive, uh, commute to work, and she had to mm -hmm. drive, she had to speed all the way there, and then work so hard, and then uh, speed on her trip home, mm -hmm. and just constantly under stress, and it was impacting her uh, life in every area of her life. And uh, so she she just yielded to the Holy Spirit and said, I, I want a better life. And uh, I'm going to yield to you and I want you to lead me and guide me. Well, uh, one of the first things that he did, and there's two, two examples of, of what happened, and they were pretty dramatic, I, I think, and so I wanted to share them with you and then I'll share some personal things. And then we'll look at some scriptures. Uh, so rather than speeding every day uh, to work and back to work and any other place that she was going on those long commutes uh, through Los Angeles, uh, she, when she started asking the Holy Spirit, uh, he told her what time to leave and what route to take. And she was never Hallelujah. late and she never had to speed again. It changed her life completely. That's the first example she shared. The second example was because she was listening to the Holy Spirit, following the Holy Spirit. And again, the Holy Spirit has perfect knowledge about the future. Uh, why? Because he's been there. He, mm -hmm. he, he's not just where you are. He, he's in every, everywhere. everywhere and every part of time, every aspect of time. And so uh, her boss came in one day and said, I've got this big project for you. Uh, so I'm here Monday morning, and I want you to work on it all week and mm -hmm. have it to me by Friday afternoon. And uh, so he left, and then uh, uh, she was going to work on the project, but the Holy Spirit uh, guided her to work on another project. We're not going to work on that big project. Work on this project. So she worked on that project on Monday. Tuesday, Holy Spirit wouldn't let her work on the big project, <laughs> and uh, but work on other projects, uh, smaller projects. Mm -hmm. well, same thing Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And then late Friday, the boss came to her. Well, you think, oh, she's going to be in trouble. She never, never worked on the big project. And so the boss came in and said, oh, you don't need to do the big project. The client has withdrawn. And so we don't need to do that. And so you need to be turn your attention to these other projects which she already I had complete. <laughs> she already had those projects complete. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a benefit from partnering with the one with who the has Holy perfect Spirit. knowledge. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Amen. He has perfect knowledge about your future. And you don't have to live a stressful life. Uh, this message is a very practical yes, uh, way is. that yeah, you yeah. can live uh without being fatigued and exhausted because that's what toiling is. Mm -hmm. It's just this long labor uh, and it's, it's going to cause a person to be exhausted. You don't have to live like that. Jesus knows a better way and by his spirit, he'll lead you into the better way. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. Uh, I, I want to just say for a personal example, how I've learned to uh, hear the Holy Spirit, and uh, I worked at a university, a large university. Uh, they had lots of buses, and I had to travel all over the uh, university with 
uh, in different buses. And uh, at one point in time, I said, uh, I want to follow the Holy Spirit. And so I took my watch off and, and I eventually gave it to my grandson. And uh, because I didn't want to be dependent upon myself and uh, my getting there because I spent a lot of time waiting at the bus stops, waiting for the appropriate bus to come. And so what I began to ask the Holy Spirit was to get me to the bus stop at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, it was just wonderful when when I'd step there on the bus stop and that bus drove up and I could just get right on. And I know I saved a lot of time, but also it was a time that I was training myself uh, to hear the Holy Spirit and follow the Holy Spirit. Well, not having a watch, I also turned off my alarm. Uh, so I stopped using an alarm in the morning to wake me up. And so That's I never, right. So I never used an alarm and I was never late. I always woke up at the right time. It, it, you can't imagine it with your natural mind, but that's what I experienced. I always woke up. I didn't wake up early. I didn't wake up late. I, work, I woke yeah. up at the right time because the Holy Spirit would prompt me and wake me up. And so I wouldn't be startled and I wouldn't have to rush around because I was late. No, I just depended on the Holy Spirit. And it's a way that I was learning myself how to follow uh, the Holy Spirit. So let's look at a couple of examples from the New Testament uh, about people mm -hmm. who, who toil. And that's just a lot of work with little results. Amen. And being Amen. fatigued and exhausted. And the first one we're going to look at is Peter uh, from Luke chapter 5. Verses 4 and 6, 4 through 6. Now, this is from the Amplified Bible. When he, Jesus, had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a haul. And Simon Peter answered, Master, we have toiled all night. Ooh, did you hear that? E all night. Exhaustively and caught nothing in our nets. But on the ground, on the ground of your word, oh, hallelujah, I will lower the nets again. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So many fish, he couldn't hold them all in That's a right. boat. That's right. He had to call he in other partners. little boats to. He had to call them in to help him because, he, okay, but he's a big fisherman. He knows all about fishing. You fish at night mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you drop your uh, net down in the daytime, the fish would see it and they'd swim away. And so he knew all of the practical things about fishing, and yet he worked all night. That's right. He, he toiled all night. He was exhausted mm -hmm. and he had no fish. No, no results. No results from all of that hard, hard work. Mm -hmm. you, you ever feel like you have worked and worked and worked? We have a, a saying uh -huh. uh, that you work your fingers to the bone. That's right. <laughs> and not have anything to show for it. Well, we don't want to work our fingers to the bone. We don't want to just work and work and work and not have anything to show for it. And that's what Peter had done. And he was a, an expert fisherman. He had a fishing business, and, uh, but he didn't know, he didn't, couldn't catch fish. But Jesus <laughs> knew. And you might say, well, Jesus wasn't a fisherman. We, we know he was a carpenter, but he's a supernatural. Yes, and he's amen. led by the Spirit of God, and he'll show you where, where the fish the are. Fish. Hallelujah. And you know, another time, he told Peter to go down and catch the fish and take Whoa, the first take fish the, and take, take the, the coin, coin out, of, out of its mouth. So Jesus knows how to fish. Woo, no, hallelujah. I don't think he doesn't know. He knows whatever situation you're going through, Jesus knows how to do it better than you do. Oh, oh hallelujah. hallelujah. That's, that's a good point. Hallelujah. Oh, so let's move, hallelujah. To, let's move to the second person I wanted to talk about in the New mm -hmm. Testament. Mm -hmm. And I hope, hope this is helping you. And we're going to talk about how to overcome this stuff, but we do not want to just work and work and work mm -hmm. and have so little to show for it and be so stressed out that we can't even sleep at night. No, that's right. not that's right. not what God wants. Right. The next person I want to talk about is Martha. Martha. Uh, and although the word toiling here may not be 
uh, in this passage, there you can get the idea. That's that's what she considered herself. That she was working, working, working. Mm -hmm. See, there are two sisters. One is named Martha, and mm -hmm. one is Mary. And Jesus comes into their house, and Mary sits at Jesus' feet and listens to him, listens to what he says. And Martha s serves everybody. And mm -hmm. you know, work, 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 work. Okay work, 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 like working her fingers to, to the, the bone. bone. She gets pretty upset. She's stressed out. Yeah. Oh, and mm. uh, wouldn't you be if you were in her situation and yeah. your sister was just sitting there, uh, sitting there listening to Jesus, wouldn't you get upset? Well, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to. <laughs> let's listen. Let's read this passage. Luke 10 verses 39 through 42. Also out of the, Ampli out of the Amplified Bible. She, Martha, had a sister named Mary, who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teaching. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. And she approached Jesus and said, Lord, is it of no concern to you that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Tell her to help me and to do her part. But the Lord replied to her. Oh, you know, oh. You, know, you, mean, you, you know, that you'd think we, we could all have been there. And wouldn't we all get upset at our sibling for not working with us if we're just working and working? But, but Jesus doesn't get upset at Mary. No, yeah. he, he's going to instruct Martha. He, he's turning mm -hmm. his attention to Martha and Martha. He's going to tell her something that's really important. Let's listen. Yeah, he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things. And I also like the way the, the King James reads. It says, Martha, Martha, you are encumbered about with much serving and in this right here it says you know you're worried you're bothered and anxious about so many things but only one thing is necessary for mary has chosen the good part that which is going to give her an advantage listen to that which will not be taken from her Woo only one thing is needful. Oh, wow. And that's to listen to the Lord, Amen. and it shall not be taken away from her. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She, hallelujah. She'll get the reward. Now, you you to think, well, Martha was right. She, she had a reason to be upset and cumbered about mm -hmm. and all uh, distracted and disturbed. Right, right. But we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about supernatural things. We're talking about the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. And he never makes a mistake. And he knows everything. He knows where you need to be when you need to be there. Glory and I also God. like the word, uh, the phrase here, that Mary is going to have the advantage. Hallelujah. Because she's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Don't you want the advantage? Oh, I want the advantage. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We can only get the advantage yeah. when we're yielded to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Following Amen. the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said in John 16, 7, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. You're going to have an advantage over everybody else. You'll have an advantage over everybody else. Hallelujah. And Mary got that advantage. And you might think, well, that's just the way it had to be. It's a natural situation. The people had to be fed. But I want you to think about our master and king. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. He fed the 5,000. 5, <laughs> just a few fish and a few <laughs> loaves. He fed the 4,000 with a few fish and a few loaves. Don't you think yeah, he could? Yeah, he couldn't even have done it then. Hallelujah. Don't you think he could do it there? Yes, he could. Yes, he could. Mm. There are mm. eternal mm. things here in the balance. We need to be right. aware of those things. Okay, now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes. And, and I want to uh, I want us to think about where does where does this toiling come from? What's the root cause of it? Well, it's trusting in yourself right. that you can do it. You're trusting in yourself. 
You're not trusting in anybody else. Mm. You're making the decisions. This is what I need to do. This is all my agenda today. I'm trusting mm. in myself. Mm. I'm self-indulgent here. But no, let, let's just look at Ecclesiastes here in Ecclesiastes 2. Read this one. Yeah, verses please. 22 and 23. What has man, what has a man from all the toil and striving of art with which he toils beneath the sun. Okay, you, what happens? Well, what do they get? If they're toiling, 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 working, 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 uh, becoming exhausted and fatigued, what are they getting from it? Listen. For all his days are full of sorrow. Sorrow? Oh. Wow. Oh, we don't want sorrow. And his work is a vexation. Vexation. That, that means it's bothering mm. you. Even in the night, his heart does not rest. Do you, do you ever have those nights when you work so hard during the day you can't mm. even rest Oh, at night? wow. That's toiling. This is also vanity. It's vanity. It's just, it doesn't amount to anything. Right, right. I want to give you some examples. Uh, uh, we know people uh, who have toiled. Oh, yeah. And uh, one person in particular had a job. And uh, they just kept putting things on her to do, task and responsibility, you do this and do that and do that. And she just um, jumped in there and did it and did it and did it, but it was, it was just wearing her out. It was, it was basically killing her. And so uh, she wanted other help. She wanted, uh, uh, and, and she knew that she was so indispensable on that job uh, that uh, nobody else could do what she did. Right. And she, and she was exactly right, but she got to the point she was just so fatigued, so exhausted, doing so much work that she quit that job and took another job. And you know what that company did? They had to hire four people to replace her. But if she continued to do all that work, they were completely happy to overwork her and drive her into exhaustion because that's what the world will do. Yeah, that's right. But to replace her, they had to hire four people. Now, here's another example. Uh, uh, I know a person who has become so indispensable, uh, that person would like to retire uh, right. where they are but there's nobody that can replace them. There's nobody there that can do what they do. They haven't trained anyone. And that's what they're thinking. Oh, I'm indispensable. If I go, well, this whole company is just going to go to the dogs. It's just going to be destroyed if I go. See, she's made herself indispensable. <laughs> oh, and put herself in a trap. In a trap where she can't leave. I mean, you know, Elijah had the same kind of an issue one time. And... And, and God said to him, oh, I could send 7,000 people there if I needed to. Right. I could send 7,000. And on her job, you know, if she left and, and she's thinking, oh, the whole company's going to collapse if I leave. And so I can't even retire. I've got to be here doing these things because nobody else knows, knows what to do. Nobody knows how I to do what I do. But God could send 7,000 replacements. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We get Amen. so caught up. We get so caught up. Caught up in ourself. Self. Oh, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Trying to trust ourselves and that we know all the answers. When this is the opposite of toiling. Right. And right. that is, this is my, I have, oh, I have three points here. And the first one I've already talked about, the number one point is toiling comes from trusting in yourself. Number two, blessings come from trusting in God. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me, let me say Number one, toiling comes from trusting mm -hmm. in yourself. It could not yielding to God, doing all the work and letting, letting the world just put more and more burdens on you and, and just being willing to do all of those things. Oh, but number two, they, this gets us out of toiling, and that is trusting in God, following the Spirit of God. Amen. That's point number two. And let's look, read from Ecclesiastes again. No, this is Proverbs. Oh, okay. I don't have another. Oh, no. Maybe it's later. Down here. Oh, okay. okay. We'll start with Proverbs. Yeah. Proverbs 6, verse 3. This is out of the Passion Translation. Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not in yourself. Did you hear that? 
totally put your trust totally in God, not 50 50, totally in God. And then what? Then every plan you make will succeed. Everything you'll do will be successful. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. total trust in the Lord. Oh, amen. Amen. Not 90 10. Yeah, yeah. Total trust in the Lord. Just what do you want me to do? Just think about that lawyer. On Monday, she could have worked on a big project for a week, and it would have been vanity and futile. Yeah, that's right. Because the client backed out on Friday. But the Holy Spirit knew all of that. Okay. So, In Proverbs 10, 22, from the Amplified Translation, the blessing of the Lord, it makes truly rich. Okay. And he adds no sorrow with it. No sorrow. Neither does toiling increase it. A toiling's not going to add to it. Hallelujah. You might say, oh, oh God's going to bless me. Oh, but I've got to work, work, I've work, 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 work. No. <laughs> it says toiling adds nothing to it. Woo! So Hallelujah. totally yield to God. Let him show you the way. Take your assignments from him every day. Get up and, and not, it's, I'm not talking about a routine, but be serious yeah. about it and, and say, what do you want me to do today? Yeah. What assignments do you have for me today? Where, where do you want me to go? Who yeah, do you want, want me, me to, to speak, speak to? to? <laughs> <laughs> <Job again. laughs> okay. Now, the, now the, here we go to Ecclesiastes. 3. Yes. Uh, read this title I have. Uh, God's gift is to see good in all your labor. Oh, see, see, that toiling winds up with nothing. But God has a gift for you. Ooh, and, and it's to see good in whatever you do. Oh, Let that's everything good. you good. do count, count. for hallelujah. something. Let hallelujah. it bring results. Don't Don't work. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and it's all vanity, vanity of vanities. Mm. No, don't mm. do that. It, if you follow the yeah, Holy the Spirit, Spirit, oh, if you follow the Holy Spirit, it will be good. You'll have good results. You'll be successful. Oh, isn't that exciting? Oh, hallelujah. It will be successful. You, you don't make mistakes Amen. following Amen. the Holy Spirit. Oh, I like that. I don't like to go back and fix something yeah. or redo something. Yeah. I don't like mistakes. That's Hallelujah. Right. And so everything you touch will prosper. Everything you do mm. will succeed. Mm. That's a gift from, from God. God. Amen. Woo, you want to receive Amen. the Amen. gift of God to be successful. It, it's not Hallelujah. by your work. Yes. See, it's a gift. You have to receive it mm -hmm. by faith. Okay, let's read this. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 12 and 13. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every person who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor. This is a gift from God. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're not Hallelujah. seeing good in some of the things you're doing, it's not a gift from God. Ooh. What God gives you is good. Good. And it's going to be good results for what you mm. do because mm. you're listening to him. You're following his assignments. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, remember, I've got three points. The first point, the first point is that toiling is from trusting in yourself. Mm -hmm. Second point, blessings mm -hmm. are from trusting in God. Amen. And your toiling cannot add anything to his blessings. Oh, that's so Hallelujah. important. Let me, let, let me say, well, let me just say that again. Let's get this one down deep inside of us. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how much toiling we do, we cannot add anything to God's blessings. Amen. Yeah. He, he provides it all. Yes, he does. Yes, it, he does. It, it, it's not half and half, you and him. No. And the blessings come from him and your toiling and your exhaustion and your fatigue and, and, and your sleeplessness at night is not going to add to your blessings mm. because his blessings 
of your being successful mm -hmm. is a gift. Hallelujah. And you just have to receive it as a faith. gift. Okay? Amen. Now here's the third Amen. point, Sherry. Read that. Third point. We is. are commanded. Woo! We are commanded to stop toiling. Uh oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so oh, many people are goodness. toiling. And and you think, oh, I, it's okay. I, I've got all of this to do. All these people are depending upon me. I've got to be toiling. I've got to be working, 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 uh, working uh, and being exhausted and fatigued and lo losing sleep and all of that. But there's a commandment here. And if we obey a commandment, we're going to be blessed. And if we don't obey the commandments, that's sin. Let me say that again. Oh. If we obey the commandments, we're blessed. Yes. If we do not obey the commandments, that sin, and sin leads to destruction. That's the reason oh, so many wow. people who are who are toiling away their life and they're leading that toiling is leading them to destruction because it is a direct disobedience to God's command when he says, stop toiling. Oh, wow. Read great. this verse. Wow, wow. <clears throat> John 6, verse 27. This is out of the Amplified Bible. Stop toiling and doing and producing for the food that perishes and de de decomposes in the using, but strive and work and produce rather for the lasting food which endures continually unto eternal life. The Son of Man will give or furnish to you that, for God the Father has authorized and certified him and put his seal of endorsement upon him. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. So where is this verse again? In John 6, <clears throat> verse 27. These are Jesus' words. Stop Toiling. toiling and we've got the approval of god on this wow <laughs> wow he's put his it's his not a wishy washy it's not we don't know he said stop toiling god put his stamp on it and it is a commandment of the lord Hallelujah. stop toiling well i've just got to feed my family and i've just got to do this and i've got to do all of these things stop toiling mm, how do we mm, do it mm. let's repent Let's repent for yes, our toiling. I, I believe we've yes. been toiling. Let, let's yes. repent. I'm going to ask Sherry to lead us in repentance. Oh, dear Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and we repent of, of toiling and trying to do things uh, ourselves, Lord. Uh, we repent of not trusting totally in you. And right now we receive your forgiveness we receive your righteousness uh lord let us trust in you and do good in the name of Amen. jesus and let us receive the blessing yes. of the gift of god oh hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah the gift of god the blessings that we don't have to toil and that we will see good for the labor amen. that we do amen when we are yielded to the Lord and Hallelujah. we're following his spirit. Thank you so much yeah, for being here. This God. is a short message. This is a quick Thank message you, today, but it's important for mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. We can get so distracted and so caught up in what needs to be done and getting out there and doing it and not asking the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in what we do day by day. Amen. Thank you for being Amen. here. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. And I, and I just want to add um, just one or two things here. And as I was meditating on uh, toiling this afternoon, um, I thought about a battle. And toiling is 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 a struggle. It's a it's a battle. And then the scripture came to me that we 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 war not against flesh and blood but with principalities and powers and wickedness and high places and so all of those the the thoughts the our fleshly uh desires um 
trusting in ourself is fleshly. Um, and those are things that, that we can fight against uh, with the Spirit of God and with the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And so as you possibly sense in your spirit that, that, that the enemy is trying to take you down that road to toil uh, and to strive. And it says that my servant does not have to strive. That's what the word, the word of God says, that his servants do not have to strive. That means they do not have to toil. And, and so um, as you trust in the Lord, uh, then he will give you guidance, of course, but also he'll give you uh, his, his word uh, to speak out of your mouth that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and that God will meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And those, those scriptures, those with that word will come out of your mouth and it will help you get your focus back on the Lord. And uh, because toiling means that you've been distracted and your focus is not on the Lord, but it's on yourself and, and, and what you can do and how much you're going to get done. You know, I, I have in dear friends that they operate, um, you know, every single day on a schedule, you know, at this time of the morning, they do this and then they do something else later on. And then they have their lunch and, you know, and they, you know, this is this, your agenda, uh, can, create an environment where the enemy can come in and and bring that temptation for you to toil and so that's why i say that we we're not going to fight with that with flesh and blood but we're going to take authority and power over any demonic force that is trying to push us uh into toiling and so i just wanted to add that uh, uh, concept there and so I'm going to open it up uh, to any comments if you have uh, something that you would like to say about this message and and uh, how it's it's touched you um, and also we want to uh, pray before we close out uh, today there's there's people that are that are missing and uh, Mary, we're glad to have you with us. And, and Jen, we're glad to have you back with us. Uh, so does anyone have any comments that they want to, to make about this, this message tonight? Uh, thank you, uh, Brother um, Fred. Uh, I'm so touched. Uh, I heard uh, you uh, shared about uh, following uh, um, the Holy Spirit when you are uh, getting the bus stop. Yes, yes. Uh, I really like this part. I, I, I wanted to uh, hear from a Holy Spirit uh, directly. So yeah. uh, how did you do that? You, you, you mentioned about uh, train, your, train yourself uh, yes. over the time. I, I, you know, to give up my watch uh, and to make my, uh, the decisions to turn them over to him to let him tell me where to go and when to go. So no longer was I uh, so restricted to my watch. I had to be here at this time. I had to be there at this time. I, it was a decision I made that I wanted him to show me and, and lead me. And, and like I said, uh, the waking up and not using an alarm was amazing to me. I couldn't have imagined that I could wake up exactly when I needed to wake up. Uh, and and not early and not late, but because I was wa I was wanting to hear from him, I was wanting him to lead me and guide me, and, and so tell her what you said. What? How did you? Well, you, you know, by taking my watch off. See, that was a that was an act of faith that I'm mm -hmm. I'm not going to be dependent. On, and I'm not saying anybody has to take Do your watch this, off. Right. It was a decision I made. I don't even know that it was the Holy Spirit telling me that way, 
but but this was a decision I made because I was very dependent on my watch. Uh, but when I took it off, then I couldn't depend on it anymore. And so I had to be mm. praying. I had to be asking him uh, when to go, uh, when to go on, on uh, uh, trips, and when to go down to be on the bus. When, which bus? See, there was a lot of buses I could ride. There's a mm. lot of uh, bus stops I could go to. Uh, and so I was always asking him, uh, as I was going through the day, uh, I was asking him, uh, where do I go? When do I go? When do I get on that bus? Where, which bus stop do I go? Which bus do I get on? And so you're just asking those questions and, and then, you know, you know, those things. And, and, uh, and it, like I say, I, I didn't get every bus exactly uh, the best I could, but I was never anxious. And so even if the bus wasn't there when I got there, I wasn't anxious about it because I had already turned that over and I was trusting him. I was trusting him to get me to the bus stop at the right time to the right bus. Uh, and, and so I could get on that. And, and I just use that as an example. That doesn't, that doesn't seem real dramatic, but it was a way that I was learning to follow him. Mm -hmm. And it, it was very important. I, it was a very important learning process for me. And, and you see, I still don't have a watch on. I, I, I've mm -hmm. been very satisfied and, and it's just helped me relax and trust in him that he knows these things and, and he knows things that I don't know. And mm -hmm. I, I could have gone out to the buses much earlier. I could have gone the wrong bus stop, uh, missed the bus, or, or but no, he always got me to the meetings I need to be, right. to the places I needed to be, and, and I stopped wasting time. And that's what toiling is. It's it's doing all of these things and being distracted about them and, and not being per, productive. productive, not being successful. And so those were little things, but it was just a decision I made and I followed it year after year. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a big faith. We have to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, this Thank is, you. The, uh -huh. also I'd like to say something about brother Fred and that is he did, he didn't do this just on the spur of the moment. Um, and that he had built his faith and you build your faith uh, by, you know, asking him little things. What do you want me to wear today? Uh, mm -hmm. What do you want me to eat today? Um, who do you want me to call today? And then you get a response from the Holy Spirit. He will say, well, I want you to, I have put on clothes and literally had to go back in and change my clothes because the Lord says, I don't want you to wear that today. I want you to wear the red instead of the blue. And, and so it's a, it's an exercise that you start out on a small scale and then you work your way so that you can see you every time you trust the Lord and and you get a positive response then you can go to the next next step and the next step and the next step so when he's talking about taking off his watch or you know depending on the Lord to wake him up uh, in the mornings it was a process that he that he went through and 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 you can do the same thing you can start out by things that are less important and then work your way so that you're trusting the lord all the time but it's mm -hmm. getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you're trusting him for bigger things and bigger things and so i don't know if that helps any at all yeah. but Yes. Okay. All right. Mm, thank you. Mm. Because you said great faith, and 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 so right, great that's faith. Right. <laughs> it, it comes from you know just a, a a mustard seed, and and it and it grows and it grows and it grows and to that giant tree, and so you know um, so 
So, well, you know, from Romans uh, 12, it talks about all of us have faith uh, because we're Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, then God gives us the faith to to be a Christian. Right. Uh, we couldn't do it on our own. So we all have faith. And so then it's our responsibility to steward that faith and so that our faith continues to grow over time. And like Sherry said, we might ask for small things small to things, begin with. Uh, see, a lot of people say, well, I want a million dollars. But if they've never asked, uh, believe the Lord for a pair of socks, uh, then they haven't built <laughs> their faith uh, to get to that point. Right. Uh, and so it's a process, as Sherry said. And we're right. very much uh, believe that as you start uh a trusting in the Lord that you're going to see positive results from trusting him. And it's going to encourage you right. uh, Give to, you keep, confidence. to keep yeah. you uh, moving towards trusting him more and more in your life. You know, and that's the way we're supposed to be walking, walk by faith and not by sight. And so we're to be using that faith, uh, whether it's little or great, we're supposed to be living that way. Uh, as as believers, and uh, and to well, me, it's and here's exciting. another way you can do it, and that and that is, well, you get in your car in the morning and and just ask the Lord, where, which route, which yeah. route do I take, uh, and and you ask Him to keep you safe that day, and there there are routes that you might miss an accident, uh, and, and He knows He has perfect knowledge, mm -hmm. and so He knows, and so. Uh, he, he may want you to go, uh, maybe every day you go basically the same way, but then one day you go a different route. Well, maybe that was to help you or save you from an accident or, or something. Uh, so it, it's a learning process, right. and, but, it, but it's a thrilling process. Right. I always say it, it, being with Jesus is an adventure. Uh, we don't mm -hmm. see him, but if we're relying on him, we're communicating with him. And we're going to see positive results in our life, and it's going to give us confidence and encouragement to keep on doing what he wants us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jen, for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks. teaching us. It's really <laughs> great. Um, we love each one of you. Does someone else have something they want to, to share? Hello, this is Mary. Okay, Mary. Thanks for the message. Um, I learned that toiling comes from trusting in self, not, not in God. Uh, right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Right. <laughs> but sometimes we all do that, like we, we tend to do things ourselves, you know, and even mm -hmm. very uh, unproductive, we still do it, like, you know. Um, so that's uh, that adds nothing to to God's blessing. I know. So, Amen. Amen. Yeah, we'll try. Well, we want to you stop. to be blessed. Yeah, we'll try to stop uh, toiling, like stop worrying. Uh, you know, um, just put things in God's hands. Yes, that's, that's right. good. That's good. It's good, Mary. Even as simple as asking the Lord what to cook for a meal. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want me to cook for this meal, Lord? Or what do you? How do you want me to cook this meal? You, you know, just begin to communicate with the Lord and ask Him these questions. Ask Him a little things. And Sherry mentioned about what clothes to wear for the day. Mm -hmm. What what food to cook for the right. meals, just different things like that. And you'll, you'll just be gaining confidence uh, that you're communicating with him and he's speaking to you. You know, he wants to communicate with you. He right. wants you to have a good life. And, and he loves to talk. And, and so it, it's <laughs> little by little uh, and, and making those little decisions, letting him help us make the little decisions and then over time we'll make bigger and bigger 
and the Holy Spirit will help us with right, their and right, decisions. Right. We have to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Any any other comments? These are good comments. I'd like to ask Sarah, uh, when will you be leaving on your trip? Yeah, so I'm going to leave for training in Colorado on June 20th. And then on like starting on like July 1st, then I'll be in East Asia. Okay, okay. Okay. Super, super. Okay. Okay. Okay, because I had someone to ask me that question today and I didn't, I didn't know the answer. So uh, I'll, I'll report that. Okay. I'll report that. Thank you. And Sophia just texts me saying that she's not feeling well today and she had to ask a friend to pick her daughter up. Uh So she's resting right now. That's why she cannot attend the meeting today. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joy. Let's pray for Sophia right now. She's been on my heart for, for two weeks now. So. Father, right now we lift up Sophia and we thank you for touching her body. We thank you for opening up that gate of healing over Sophia right now. Let her receive her healing. Let her receive uh, all that she needs in her body right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for her nerves to be at peace. We thank you, Lord, for her thoughts to be upon you. Uh, that there are no distractions there uh, in the name of Jesus. And also we stop the thievery. The enemy has tried to steal, kill, and destroy. And in the name of Jesus, we stop the thievery in Jesus' name. And when the thief has been caught, he has to restore back to Sophia sevenfold what he has stolen from her in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for raising her up strong and healthy in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. That that word right there that I just spoke over Sophia is for this whole group. And I'm going to receive it myself. What the enemy has stolen from you. It might be healing. It might be clarity it might be um finances it might be family relationships whatever he has stolen from you right now he has to restore back to you sevenfold in the name of jesus Amen. that's in the book of proverbs Amen. proverbs six proverbs chapter six verses 30 and 31 30 and 31 he has been caught tonight Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Some of you, it's healing. Some of you, it's finances. Some of you, it's it's uh, stability. Uh, some of you, it's uh, your confidence level. Uh, some, it's it's there are so many things, and whatever it is that he has stolen from you, just write them down and say sevenfold is coming back to me Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, next week, uh, we will not be here. Our granddaughter in Texas is graduating from high school, and so we're going to be out there and celebrating her graduation. Yes. And we'll be traveling back on Tuesday, and so we won't have uh, this Tuesday night meeting next week. But we'll be back with you the following week. Well, we'll be back in two weeks. So thank you for uh, thank you, thank Jesus. You for being thank here you, tonight. Jesus. Now I want to pray um, um, over Sarah, uh, Father. Right now we pray over Sarah that she is being sent as your messenger uh, to East Asia Amen. in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that the angels of God are already encamped around about her, keeping her safe, keeping her free of sickness and disease, keeping her free of any harm uh, in Jesus' name. And Lord, that she will be your light there. She will be a beacon uh, of hope to those people. She will be a beacon unto what you can do for them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for Sarah in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. We love each one yes, of you so much, and we're so glad to have Joy back yes. with us. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. I, I'm very much impressed with this group. Hallelujah. And so we send you forth into the workplace. We send you forth into uh, the, the marketplace. We send you forth into the mission field in Jesus' name Amen. to do what Amen. God has called you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Mary, Mary, are you going back to China sometime this summer? No, this year, maybe next year. Okay. 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 <laughs> So we'll we'll be able to see your face. Okay. Uh, good, good, good. Okay. Love you. Yeah, love bye you. bye. Thank you. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Bye.